Hello, everyone, and thank you to Strike as Spark. My name is Joseph R. Pagano, and I'm a graduating student here in the BSW program. I have also been a practitioner in the field of drug and alcohol service for the last four and a half years. My mentor, Dr. Janice McCall, is a social work professor here at Cal U. The title of our project was Measuring Customer Satisfaction Amidst COVID-19. And what we did was is observations on telehealth and social work practice. Welcome. I love telehealth. And let me tell you why. While working as a certified practitioner, this study has spoken volumes to my passion for treatment. This is why it's an important study for me. The research project was also very interesting because I know how important it is to ensure that people have access to their therapists and their practitioners, especially during these dark times of the pandemic. Telehealth has been around for some time, but with COVID, I really saw a huge increase in the adoption of it because there weren't many other viable options. And I just want to say this presentation reports on a community-based organization's telehealth program, and it shows how delivery modality and how clients express their satisfaction and access of behavioral health care. And the study included 100 100 existing clients, which were 43 males and 57 females. And it was at two sites of a Southwestern Pennsylvania behavioral health provider. Now, before we get into this study, there's some, some important contextual factors that need to be highlighted. The first is the impact of our healthcare systems due to COVID-19. As you can see, it, it talks about the health insurance coverage has been significantly undermined and the U.S. experienced a surge in unemployment. It also says that a racial disparities in the COVID cases nationwide and has the African Americans constitute 13% of the U.S. population, but for 20% of the COVID-19 cases and 22% of COVID-19 deaths. And that brings us into the disparities in these rural communities. See, another important thing to know about this study, it focuses on the rural communities. Many rural areas are known as to be within a medically underserved areas. We know them as MUAs. Now, this can include other sobering statistics associated with few primary or behavioral health care providers. And that includes a high infant mortality. We have the high poverty. We have the high elderly population. See, many of these rural communities also may experience barriers tied to lack of broadband internet access. You know, I'm also from one of these rural communities, right into a, a, a central location within a tri-county area. And that brings us into, we have the age considerations, which, you know, this study, we look at barriers based on age. You know, some who are not digital natives may experience the barriers such as ease of access and then we have the, the cost and use of telemedicine or the telehealth options. Now these age barriers you know, also cause access issues. Now when we talk about access, my last consideration before we get into my study is the concern of accessing care during COVID-19. Now studies have been reporting that telehealth may bridge the gap as a modality for healthcare. Now this method is now being utilized with various diverse populations, but it may be comparable to in-person care in some way. Now, given what we know from the literature, our study examines satisfaction and access in the behavioral health services. Now we looked at a cohort of rural clients who were transitioned into telehealth services. And this was a delivery model that was due to COVID-19. Some of the hypotheses we was, uh, the first one is we would report less benefits of telehealth service. We also would have less ease of accessing telehealth. And the third one is we would perceive having less privacy using telehealth. You know, also study, it was, a secondary data analysis, which that means is we use data from someone else's survey. There are limitations with that. For example, in a future study, I would collect broader demographics. See, we use Jamovi, which is an open source, 
free statistical analysis software. And we analyzed the survey across its 15 items. We also used chi-square tests of association between accessing telehealth, the degree of privacy being respected and perceived benefits of telehealth services and preferences between the telehealth and face-to-face -face services. Here are the results. We had 100 participants. As you can see, we had 50 males, 51 females. In preference with telehealth, we had 51 participants and 44 as face-to-face. -face. So there were 56 who preferred it and 44 who preferred face-to-face. -face. Once again, there were 17 who responded that telehealth was less beneficial than face-to-face. 32 who responded that telehealth was more beneficial than face-to-face -face, and 52 who thought they were equal. And the majority of subjects responded with a high satisfaction with telehealth services. Now we ran the chi-square test, but we found significant differences in the perception of privacy between those who prefer telehealth versus face-to-face -face, with those preferring face-to-face -to, -face to perceive less privacy with telehealth we found significant difference in whether telehealth is beneficial between those who prefer telehealth versus face-to-face -face and those who prefer telehealth to report on it being more beneficial. We also found no difference in the ease of access between those who prefer telehealth compared to those who prefer face-to-face. -face. So what does this mean? See, I believe that telehealth was well received at this clinic and clients were satisfied with the care received through telehealth. I also think there was a minority of clients who, even though telehealth was easy to access, there was high satisfaction and some still prefer face-to-face. -face. This to me is an important clinical consideration because some clients may do better in face-to-face -face situation. And so clinics should consider whether telehealth is appropriate for all. In the literature, there is consistency of how telehealth has been adopted in practice. But however, to these points, and as a practitioner myself, it's important for me to look at the implications of my study's finding. As you can see, practitioners must check the quality of care and adjust across the variety of these populations. As you can see, the treatment motivation, the costs, the scarcity, and the technical support and the hearing and visual acuity. Now, we also want to improve the efficiencies and costs for clients who like to be moved to a telehealth platform. This is huge. Once again, I would like to thank you for your time and I'd like to open it up for any questions. Thank you.